were three little pigs living in a cute hut deep in the forest. That day, the eldest pig took his brothers to the pool. The middle pig asked his brother, But we didn't take our swimsuits with us. How can we swim? The little pig was sad and said, I wish I had taken my armbands. However, the eldest pig had another idea in his mind. Our ships will swim today, not us. Let's collect materials from around and race our ships. The three little pigs happily gathered their materials and built their ships. The little pig made a tiny ship out of paper. The middle pig made a ship out of leaves. And their eldest brother made a huge ship out of tree bark. All three left their ships in the pool and the race began. On the other hand, the big bad wolf of the forest woke up from his sleep, itching and scratching his head. Since he hadn't bathed in a long time, he was looking everywhere for a place to bathe. Finally, he saw the pool where the pigs were racing and jumped into the middle of them, saying, Roar! Get out of here now, piggies! I have fleas and I itch a lot! I need to get in the pool and wash up! Otherwise, I will huff and puff and sink your ships! Huh, my ship is solid! You can't sink it, said the little pig. But when the wolf started to take a deep breath and puff it out... <gasps> the paper ship turned upside down and sank! The little pig was crying non-stop. <laughs> the wolf started to breathe in and puff out again. This time, the middle pig's leaf ship sank immediately. <laughs> the wolf took one last deep breath and puffed out with all his might. But no matter how hard he puffed out, he couldn't sink the big pig's ship. Go down! Sink! At that moment, the eldest pig threw the ship he made out of tree bark into the honeycomb hanging above. And the beehive fell, and the wolf's head got in it. What's going on? The wolf was even more frightened when he heard the buzz buzz noise of the bees. <laughs> I'm so scared of bees! <laughs> However, the noise he heard belonged to the three little pigs, not bees. Buzz buzz buzz! buzz, buzz. buzz. <laughs> the wolf failed to sink the ship, and moreover, he got even dirtier and barely made his way back to his lair. The eldest pig, whose ship did not sink, became the winner of this race. So he taught his brothers how to build strong ships, and they had fun in the pool until the evening together. Once upon a time, in a little cottage in the woods, lived a mother goat and her little goats leading a happy life. The little goats were very cute. They all were like toys. Mother Goat, like all mothers, loved her little goats very much. She protected them from all the wild animals in the forest. One day, before she left the house to find food in the forest, she called her little goats next to her and... My dear children, I am going into the forest. Do not open the door for anyone. If the wolf comes into the house, he will eat all of us alive. He's very shifty. He will disguise himself into different shapes and try to fool you. So how will we recognize him? The wolf has a rough voice, and I have a soft and sweet voice. So you can recognize him from his low and rough voice right away. Right when she was leaving, the mother goat remembered something else. She turned to her little goats. Ah, one more thing. The wolf's feet are black and mine are white. You can also recognize him from his feet. Don't worry, mother. We can protect ourselves. You can count on us. 
Mother goat kissed her little goats one by one and headed into the woods. The wolf was watching them from afar. When he saw Mother goat leaving, he waited a while and then he came in front of the cottage and knocked on the door. Who is it? Little goats, open the door. Your mother is here. I brought nice food for you all. But the little goats recognized the wolf's rough voice right away. Without opening the door, they yelled out. You're not our mother. Her voice is sweet and more beautiful. You're the wolf. You can't fool us. The wolf got very angry because he could not fool the little goats. So he went to the shop, bought a big piece of chalk and ate it. Now his voice sounded much softer. So he went back to the cottage and knocked on the door again. This time the wolf started to talk with his soft voice. My little goats, open the door, it's your mother. I brought food from the forest for all of you. Hearing the wolves, Soft voice, the little goats thought that it was really their mother this time. Just when they were about to open the door, one of them shouted, Wait, wait, let's look at the feet from underneath the door. Of course, when the little goats looked from underneath the door, they saw the wolf's black feet. So they yelled again without opening the door. We will not open the door for you. Our mother's feet are not black. They are white. You're the wolf. As furious as he was, the wolf left. This time, he went to the bakery. When the baker saw the wolf in front of him, he was very surprised. I'm a vegetarian now, so I will eat pastry from now on. Could you give me some flour? The wolf came out of the bakery with a little sack of flour. When he got near the cottage, he opened the sack and poured all the flour on his feet. Now his feet were all white. The shifty wolf knocked on the door for the third time. My little goats, open the door. It's your mother. I have brought food for all of you from the forest. First show us your feet so we know it's you, mother. The wolf showed them his feet with flour. When the little goats saw the white feet, they believed that it was their mother and opened the door. And what did they see? The wolf was standing right there in front of them. The little goats did not know what to do. They started to run around yelling. <laughs> Don't waste your time. I will catch all of you. One of the little goats went under the desk. The second one into the bed. The third one into the chimney. Fourth kid hid in the kitchen. The fifth one got into the closet. The sixth hid behind the curtain. And the seventh kid went into the giant clock on the wall. But the shifty wolf was quick, and one by one he caught them all from wherever they were hiding. Run! Run! Come here! Don't run! I will catch you all! I said stop! <laughs> The only one he could not find was the one hiding in the clock. He was already full, so he gave up on looking for them and head out. There was a big yard a little further from the cottage. The wolf lay under a tree on the yard and started to sleep, snoring. Short while after, the mother goat returned home. When she saw the door open, she knew something bad had happened and started to scream. Oh, my little goats! <gasps> when she entered the house, she was shocked. The tables and chairs were all upside down. Curtains were torn. The beds were all messed up. The pillows and sheets were all on the floor. Mother Goat looked for her little goats but could not find them anywhere. She started to yell out their names, one by one, but not one answered. Finally, it was time to call the last one's name. 
Only then she heard a high-pitched voice. I'm inside the grandpa clock, mummy. Mother goat ran to the grandpa clock and took her kid out of there. Mother goat and kid hugged. The little goat started to tell the story, crying. The wolf came in disguise and he thought it was you and opened the door. The wolf ate all my brothers. <laughs> oh, darling. Mother goat was very upset. She cried for her little goats. With only one of her kids remaining, she walked out and started to go towards the yard. After a while, they saw the wolf sleeping under a tree. He snored so bad that the branches of the tree were shaking. Mother goat observed the wolf for a while. She realized that inside his tummy, some things were moving. Oh my God! Can it be that my goats are in his tummy and they're still alive? She had a plan. She turned to her kid. Run home. Bring me a needle, thread, and the scissors. When the little kid was running home, Mother Goat collected six big rocks from the floor. After a while, the little goat came back with a needle, thread, and the big scissors. Mother Goat cut open the wolf with the scissors. She saw one of her little goats right away, and then the other ones started to appear one by one. They were all healthy. Mother goat couldn't stay still from the joy she had. All the little goats hugged their mothers with joy. Mama, mama, we love you. They were all full of joy. Ah, my little goats, you're safe. Mother goat put the rocks she collected carefully inside the wolf. Then she stitched his tummy with the needle and thread. The wolf was sleeping so deep he'd not feel anything. He did not move. Mother goat and her little goats quickly got away. When the wolf woke up, he stood up. His tummy hurt really bad. He thought to himself that it was because he ate too many goats. Because his tummy was full of rocks, he got really thirsty. He came next to the river to drink some water. But when he was walking, the rocks were hitting each other. My tummy feels so heavy and full. It's as if all the goats I ate turned into rocks. He wanted to kneel down and drink some water. Due to the rocks being so heavy, he lost his balance and slipped into the water. Oh! Help! Help me! I'm drowning! Help! Yelled out for help, but no one helped him. He could not bear the weight of the rocks anymore and went under into deep waters. When they saw what happened, Mother Goat and her little goats ran to the river. And they all started to dance and jump around. From that day on, Mother Goat and her seven little goats had a peaceful and happy life in their cottage in the forest. The Wolf and the Seven Little Goats. Once upon a time, a wolf wandered. He was hungry all the time. He ate a lot, but he could never get enough to satisfy his stomach. I am hungry again. So, day and night, he would wander the forest, chasing prey. One day, the hungry wolf discovered a small hut. He sneaked up carefully and quietly. And when he got close, he looked out of the trees, saw that a mother goat and her seven babies lived in the hut. Ooh. Now there's a meal that'll last a whole week. <laughs> the crafty wolf laid in wait and spied the hut until the morning. In the morning, the mother goat was about to kiss her seven babies and leave the house. My children, 
I'm going to the market now to buy some food. Be careful and do not open the door to anyone. All right, All right mommy. mommy. <laughs> the mother goat left the house to go to the market. At that time, the wolf, sneakily watching the hut, called it an opportunity and jumped out. But he needed a genius idea to fool little goats. Hmm, the best tactic for catching these goats is a disguise. The wolf first put on an old dress. He pulled his ears down and made two goat horns from the branches and put them on his head. Then, with his feet covered in flour, he stole a fresh and warm apple pie from the house of someone he doesn't know. And I'll just change my voice, too, like that. I'm such a good grandmother. <laughs> the wolf walked slowly to the front of the hut and knocked on the door. Little goats, hearing the sound, immediately rushed to the door. One of them was going to open the door with excitement. But another little goat warned him. Wait! You shouldn't just open a door like that. You have to ask, who is it? Who is it? It's me, my babies, your grandmother. I came to take you to the park. Huh. Our grandmother lives very far away. You can't be her. Oh, it's been such a long trip. Come on, dears, open the door, let's go to the park. When the wolf said that, the little goats looked under the door and looked at the wolf's feet. Look, her feet are just like ours. Yes, but her nails are too long, like a wolf. When the little goats did not open the door again, the wolf made them smell the apple pie he brought them. Look, I brought your favorite apple pie, dear grandchildren. And wolves don't know how to bake pies. The goats smelled the apple pie and got excited and opened the door. None of them understood that he was a wolf in disguise. Come, Come on, on Grandma. Grandma. Let's go to the park. We'll eat, we'll eat our, our apple, apple pie, pie when, we, when return. we return. The little goats and wolf left the hut. Mmm, I'm so hungry. I can hardly contain myself. While the goats were walking happily, the wolf's dress caught on the branch of a tree. The dress slipped off the wolf slowly, and the little goats were stunned by surprise when they saw the wolf's horrible fur. When the wolf realized he was spotted, his ears flipped up, his sharp teeth showed, and he jumped on the goats. He found and caught them all one by one. Only one of them survived, and he ran away from the wolf. The wolf kidnapped six little goats and took them to his dark nest. To inform his mother, the little goat that survived ran so fast that he lost his breath. Meanwhile, the mother goat returned home from the market with a basket of fruit and vegetables. The door of the house was wide open. She hurried inside, but couldn't see her tiny babies around. My babies? Where are you? Ah, my little goats! Ah. The mother goat was so worried that she immediately ran out of the house to start looking for her little kids. Meanwhile, she noticed the large footprints on the ground. Oh no! These tracks are the footprints of a wolf! She followed them for a while, but then the ground changed and the prince disappeared. 
What am I going to do now? Oh, 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 oh. a wolf has kidnapped my children. Oh, oh, oh. While the mother goat cried, the little goat that had escaped came running to her. Mom! Mommy! My baby! Where are your brothers? What happened? Tell me quickly. A hungry wolf disguised himself as our goat grandmother and tried to kidnap us, mother. Only I survived, but I know where they are. The mother goat and her little baby ran to the wolf's lair. When they arrived, they heard the voices of the little goats. <coughs> this is the wolf's lair. We have to be very careful now, baby. The mother goat and her kid came up with a clever plan to save the other little goats. They both stood in front of the wolf's house and made a huge bear shadow with their hands inward. Inside, the wolf was just about to eat the little goats, but saw the scary bear-shaped shadow. Oh, what is this? Is it a bear or...? I am a giant bear with a very hungry stomach. There must be a wolf around here that will fill my stomach. <laughs> oh, no. The wolf was so afraid that the bear would eat him that he immediately started to run out of his lair. No, help me, bear, 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 the bear will eat me, bear. Seeing the wolf running away, the little goats came out with joy and hugged their mother tightly. The wolf ran away! The wolf ran away! And from then on, the mother goat and her seven children lived a peaceful life away from the wolf in their hut in the forest. The summer season was over, and the day the baby goats have been eagerly waiting for has finally arrived. Hooray! Today is the first day of school! I'm so excited to see my friends! Me too! The mother goat sent her cubs to school. While seven baby goats were walking on the school road, one of them suddenly stopped because he forgot something very important. I forgot my painting book. You go, my siblings. I will catch up with you. While the baby goat was on his way home alone, Big Bad Wolf Jack, who was always hungry, was looking for prey in the forest. Uh, this is too big. This is too small. I can't be full with it. This is too fast! I can't catch it! At this moment, the wolf was very happy when he saw the baby goat. Wow! A baby goat! My favorite! <laughs> to trick the baby goat and to get him off the road, the big bad wolf made two antennae from the branch of a tree and two wings from its large leaves. <laughs> I look like those cute butterflies who are friends with goats. Now let me trick that little goat and swallow him with a great appetite. The baby goat was about to enter the garden of the house, but he suddenly saw the big bad wolf in front of him. Huh? Y you You are the bad wolf Jack! Help! No, no! I am not a wolf. I'm a butterfly. Look, do wolves even have antennae like this? But, but you have a long tail. But I have big wings too. Yeah, you are a butterfly. Yeah, yeah. I'm the biggest butterfly in the forest. Where I live is a wonderful place. Come, I'll take you. But, well, I have school today. It's even better! We'll go right away and come back. Don't you want to have a nice adventure and tell your friends on the first day of school? 
Big Bad Wolf Jack and the baby goat were making their way deeper into the forest, while the other baby goats were painting in art class. But when one of the brothers turned his head, he saw that one of his brothers was not in his place. He hastily told his teacher, and they all started looking for the baby goat. Meanwhile, the baby goat who was following the wolf was asking him curious questions. Butterflies fly. Why are you walking? Can't butterflies like you fly? Ba? Yeah, but if I fly, there will be a storm. Now close your eyes and count slowly to three. Okay. One. Bad Wolf Jack tied himself to a tree branch by the waist with a thin rope. Two. And he started to shake himself from side to side. Three. When the baby goat opened his eyes, he saw the bad wolf flapping his wings right to left. Ba! You really can fly. But the branch, which could not carry the weight of the wolf, broke. And when the wolf fell to the ground, one of his wings flew away. Oh, your wing is broken! Let me go call for help. Ba! Wait! Haven't you ever seen one-winged butterflies? One-winged butterflies? Ba! They live hidden in places in the forest. Come on, follow me. <laughs> Bad Wolf Jack and Baby Goat came to a place in the forest full of bouncy leaves. The wolf climbed onto one of the bouncy leaves. He jumped, jumped, and flew into the air. The goat that was watching the wolf was fascinated by that. The bad wolf then came to the goat. He wanted to eat him right there, but at that moment, a crow flew and landed on the antenna on the wolf's head. Ah, a crow! Help! I don't like crows at all. Go! Hey! Go! The wolf shook his head quickly, and the crow took the antenna from his head and flew away. The crow took your antenna. So what's gonna happen now? There are also butterflies with one wing and one antenna, baby goat. What? Really? Yes. Let me take you to the cave where they live so you can see for yourself. Yeah. Why not? Bah. I'm curious about them. Besides, whoever enters the cave learns to fly. What? I want to fly too! Very cool! Searching for the baby goat all over the forest, the siblings found a torn leaf and a broken branch on the ground. Bah! They plucked the leaf and cut the branch! Who would do this to the forest? Bah! Bah! When the teacher saw the giant footprints on the ground, she immediately realized that the wolf did this and thought that the baby goat was in danger and made a plan to save it. Just then, as soon as the baby goat entered the den, Bad Wolf Jack took off his wing and antennae and threw them aside. The poor baby goat was so scared when he saw the wolf in front of him you are the big bad wolf! After a while, the teacher and the baby goats came to the wolf's den and hid in the two corners of the entrance. The teacher stretched the sticky thread she was using in the painting class to both ends of the cave. Then she asked the baby goats to dance in front of the den. <laughs> Hearing the voices of the goats, the wolf was immediately alert. Aha! There are more goats out there. I'll go and get them here too. 
The wolf wanted to jump on the goat, but got tangled in the sticky threads at the entrance of the den. And he revolved and disappeared into the woods. Help! Help! Thanks for saving me. I fell into the wolf's trap because I wanted to be a flying goat. You should always be yourself, little goat. Not compare yourself to anyone else. The baby goats returned to school together and continued their lessons with the excitement of the first day. Since that day, the baby goat has not been deceived by any trap because the information he learned at school made him more careful throughout his life. Once upon a time, right on the edge of the forest, lived a golden-haired girl. This golden yellow-haired girl's name was Goldilocks. She had such amazing and admirable locks that everyone who saw her was mesmerized. But despite her sweetness, at times she could be a rather naughty little girl. Every time she stepped out to play, her mother would have to warn her to behave. Darling, please stay in the backyard and don't go into the woods. Deep into the forest in a shack lived a bear family. A broad-shouldered papa bear, a medium-sized mama bear and a baby bear. Mama Bear always woke up early to prepare oatmeal porridge for breakfast. One morning, Baby Bear woke up earlier than usual and wanted to eat his porridge. But it was too hot. Mama, can we go out for a walk in the woods until our porridge cools down? Mama, Papa and Baby Bear left their porridges on the table and went out for a walk. The same morning, Goldilocks was playing in the backyard while waiting for her mum to prepare breakfast. But she was so bored of playing in the same yard all the time, and she was very curious about the deep parts of the forest. What would happen if I just went for a walk? She looked around, seeing that no one was around. She began running into the forest. When she got tired, she stopped and looked around. What a beautiful forest! Flowers, trees... Why didn't I come here before? She began to walk deeper into the forest. In the meantime, walking around with his family, the baby bear saw a beehive on the branch of a tree. Such a big beehive! I'm sure it is full of honey! Papa, can we eat some honey? No, my boy. That belongs to the bees. It's their home. We can't go in anybody's home and eat their food. It's not right. You're right. I think I will have to wait until we go home for my breakfast. Meanwhile, Goldilocks walked all by herself for such a long time. Finally, she got lost. She tried to turn back but could not make out the right way. She got really tired and hungry. She was almost in tears of her tiredness. She walked a little more, and finally she came to the end of the road. And she came across the house of the bear family in between the trees. She quietly approached the house, walked around it, but she could not see anyone. She knocked on the door, but nobody answered. Then she looked through the window, she saw three hot steamy plates on the table. She went back to the door again, and this time she knocked hard. The door opened. Goldilocks was overjoyed. She looked in and yelled. Anybody home? When there was no answer, she entered. She approached the table. On the table, there were three bowls of porridge. One big, one medium-sized, and one small. Because she was so hungry, she wanted to eat the big one first. 
but the moment she put the spoon in her mouth, whew, her mouth burned, because the porridge was still too hot. She immediately reached the medium bowl, but she did not want to eat this either, because it was too cold. It's too cold! Finally, she dipped her spoon into the smallest one. Hmm, this porridge is neither cold nor too hot. It's exactly the way I want it. So she ate all the porridge in the smallest bowl. When she was done with her breakfast and felt full, she wanted to sit on one of the three chairs in front of the chimney to rest for a while. One of the three chairs was a big one, the other one, medium, and the last one was a small one. First she tried to sit on the big one, but she couldn't even climb on it. She tried the medium one, but this one was very hard. It was very uncomfortable. Finally, she sat down on the smallest one. This one was very comfortable and exactly her size. But suddenly, the chair broke into pieces with a very loud noise. Goldilocks found herself on the floor and she did not know what to do. She walked through to the next door and here there were three beds. A big, a medium sized and a small one. First she tried the big bed. This one was too big for her and also too hard. Second one was a little bigger than her size, but also too soft. So she lied down on the third and smallest bed. This one was exactly her size, and it was very comfortable. So comfortable that Goldilocks fell asleep right away. Whilst Goldilocks was sleeping, the bear family came back home. Papa Bear had some wood with him that he collected for the chimney. Mama Bear had fresh berries and Baby Bear just could not wait to have his porridge. When they arrived home, they went straight to the table. Papa Bear had a look at his bowl and was so angry. Somebody tasted my porridge! Mama Bear also looked at her bowl. Somebody also tasted my porridge. And when Baby Bear looked at his bowl, he began to cry. <laughs> that somebody also tasted my oatmeal porridge. Not only tasted it, also ate it all. <laughs> they got up and started to look around. Papa Bear noticed his chair in front of the chimney. Somebody sat on my chair. Look, it's on a different spot. And then it was Mama Bear's turn to complain. Somebody also sat on my chair. And just like before, the baby bear began to cry again. <laughs> Somebody also sat on my chair, but broke it too. <laughs> the bear family curiously went to the bedroom. Somebody lied on my bed. Look how it's undone. Somebody lied on mine too. Somebody lied on my bed too. Then is still sleeping in it. <laughs> Papa Bear walked next to Baby Bear's bed and saw that someone really was sleeping in his bed slowly lifted up the blankets and they were really surprised to see a little girl sleeping in the bed. What is a little girl doing in our house? <laughs> Tell this little girl to get out of my bed now! <laughs> Waking up to baby bears crying, Goldilocks saw three bears in front of her and she ran out of the room in great fear. She went out of the house and started running without looking back. She got breathless from running, but she did not stop. And she didn't even know which way to go. 
Right at that moment, she saw her parents coming across from the forest. When she didn't end up going back home, they went out looking for her. Goldilocks was very happy to see her parents. She ran and hugged her mother. <laughs> oh, mummy! We were so worried. Are you okay? From now on, I will always listen to you. I will never leave without letting you know. <laughs> Goldilocks hugged her parents really tight. From that day on, as she promised, she always listened to her parents and did nothing without having their permission. She was a well-behaved and kind girl forever. On a little farm lived a cute duck family. Mummy Duck was sitting on her eggs waiting for her new ducklings to hatch. There were exactly seven eggs that were waiting to hatch. One sunny morning, the eggs began to hatch. Soon after, with great joy, the six little ducklings began to hatch. The ducklings were trying to adapt to the new world. They were quacking and walking around Mother Duck. However, the largest egg of them all was still trying to hatch and Mother Duck began to worry. She thought that there might be something wrong. She decided to wait a little while longer. And at last, the seventh and the largest egg hatched. With great confusion, the poor ducklings began to look around. Little did he know his mother and siblings were a bit more confused than he was. Because this duck, in particular, did not look like his siblings. He was built much more broader and had grey and white feathers. The other ducklings began to laugh at him. What an ugly duckling you are! You look nothing like us! I don't get it. How come you look nothing like your siblings? Some time later, the ducklings all grew older. But the ugly duckling was much bigger than the others, even the colour of his feathers. You grew up so fast. How did you turn out to be so different? Time was passing by and the ugly duckling was growing up to be a different and sad duck. None of his siblings wanted to play with him. We won't play with you because you're ugly. All the other animals on the farm were making fun of him. <coughs> ugly duckling, ugly duckling. Na 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 na, ugly duckling, ugly duckling. Mother Duck, on the other hand, was doing her best in protecting him. My poor duckling, why are you so different than the others? As the days passed, the poor ugly duckling was feeling Horrible. All night long he would silently cry and think to himself that no one would ever want him. <coughs> Why am I so ugly? Why couldn't I turn out to be like my siblings? One day, some hunters approached the lake near where they lived. The hunters began to hunt the ducks they had seen. Whilst Mother Duck was looking for food for the ducklings, she was caught by the hunters. The poor duckling, not knowing what had been happening, he waited till morning for his mother to return. Poor duckling didn't know what to do. First he went next to the dog, and the dog told him to go. Go away. No one should see me talking to an ugly duck like you. A while later, he went next to the chicken, but the chicken also made fun of him. Even I'm better looking than you. <laughs> ugly duckling was very sad. No one wants me here. If my mother isn't coming back, there's absolutely no reason for me to stay on this farm.
that morning, the ugly duckling left the farm. He swam to the other side of the lake. He asked the same question to all the animals he bumped into along the way. Do you know of any duck that looks like me? Do you know of any ducks that look like me? Do you know of any ducks that look like me? He received the same answer from all of them. They had never seen such ugly duck before. Poor duckling began his journey and reached another lake once he was there. He asked the same question to the geese. You mustn't stay here like this. There are hunters around. Quickly get away from here. Go on, now go. The ugly duckling began to move along. Soon after another lake appeared. This time he was all alone. There was no one to be seen. Well then, if nobody wants me, I will hide here forever. Even though he was all alone, he was very happy. One day, he saw a horde of white long-necked birds migrating to the south. He looked at them with admiration. How beautiful they are! I wish I could be like them! Winter had come and snow had begun to fall. The ugly duckling fell in love with the sight of his first ever snow. Playing around, he was covered in white snow. Due to the heavy snow, the ugly duckling was finding it hard to find food. So off he went walking around trying to find food. He was cold and tired. Meanwhile, he came across a farmer. The farmer felt sorry for him and gave his jacket. You poor thing, how cold you are. I will take you home and look after you until you grow. The farmer did as he said and took good care of him. When spring had arrived, the ugly duckling had grown. So that he would have free space to move around, the farmer decided to leave him in a lake. All alone once again, after some time had passed, the ugly duckling looked at his reflection in the water. But he was amazed at what he saw. At first, he couldn't recognize himself. He thought there was someone else behind him. So he flipped his wings and noticed that his reflection was doing the same thing. He stretched out his neck and his reflection continued to copy his movements. Right then, he knew that this amazing bird was no one other than himself. Oh, how much I've changed. I look like the birds in the sky. I must return back home and show myself at once. And off he went. While he was swimming in the lake, he came across a wedge of swans. Because he was one of them now, they took him along. Ugly Duckling was travelling in joy with the swans. A boy at the lake shore yelled out to his friends when he saw the swans. Hey, look at the young one! All the way back! Must be the most beautiful swan I've seen! Yes, from the beginning, he indeed was a swan. He was just an unfortunate egg which got mixed up in between the ducks. But now he was with his real family and ahead of him was a happy life.